Hi, I'm Jess and this is Andy. We're from Cox Architecture and we're presenting Edithvale, Chelsea and Bond Beach stations and their associated urban design. These were delivered as a group package as part of a level crossing removal project. The three suburbs are located about 30 kilometres out of Melbourne on this sweeping beach that runs all the way from Beaumaris right through to Frankston. And what records show is that these sites are actually on what used to be a 20 kilometre long barrier dune. On one side of that was Port Phillip Bay, and then on the other was the expansive Karam Karam wetland, which apparently had the biodiversity to rival Kakadu. This barrier dune was extremely important for local people as a seasonal corridor to move along the part, this part of the bay, dipping into the bay for the riches and also um, tapping into the food larder that was that wetland. Like we got it happening now. The um, new settlers uh, didn't value that wetland in the same way and they actually drained the entire wetland to create pasture um, with mixed success. Apparently it used to flood quite regularly. Uh, trains came through in about in the early 1900s, um, really opening up this, this part of Melbourne. Um, initially with a bunch of seaside towns with a, a holiday type character. Interestingly at Bomb Beach they used to mine sand and take it back to Melbourne to create glass. And then with electrification slowly urban sprawl moved all the way out from Melbourne right through to this part of the world. In this area you can see that corridor running so close in proximity to the bay and you can also see the barrier effect that the two roads in Nepean Highway and Station Street and that rail corridor create separating the suburb in the east and the, the shops in the bay in the west. You can also see how those two roads squeeze that rail corridor and it's one of the narrowest of any crossing the ripples to date. At street level you can see that low scale and coastal character pervade, but when you're driving along that Nepean Highway it's quite a monotonous experience with very little to differentiate the suburbs once you get down to this part of the area. At the time the project was announced, it was about 2019 and there was strong community opposition still to elevated rail, um, and in this instance community sentiment and the technical challenges aligned. Uh, so one of the main technical challenges um, for rail over in this instance was the presence of the steel train on the Frankston line which can only be delayed for up to 40 days. And there was no conceivable way to build that elevated rail in less than 40 days. But on the flip side, conventional rail under, which has a trench, was challenging here because of the prevalence of groundwater flows trying to move from that remnant wetland in the east through to the bay in the west. And a full depth trench would have substantially impacted that flow. So this is a long section of a conventional rail under. So you can see there the level crossing the road uh, the concourse which normally connects into it and then vertical transport which takes you down to the platforms. This requires quite a deep trench and that depth also has to continue for the whole length of the platform so it is quite a lot of excavation. In our instance we were able to move the stations away from the road, that level crossing, um, which was now removed, and pull it up out of the trench, that full depth of the trench, and this substantially reduced the amount of excavation. The, the dash line is where it would have had to have been, so it saved a lot of cubic metres of soil. In cross-section you can see the benefits of this half trench solution which we were able to achieve with the platforms much closer to street level and light. In plan that meant we were able to have multiple um, access points to the platforms on each side around three to four uh, because the ramps and stairs don't have to have as big of a footprint. In the middle there we've got a central pedestrian bridge which crosses over the rail line and that's accessible 24 7 to the public not just to commuters to allow them to cross. The station buildings are squeezed in on either side of the trench uh, to fit in a shared user path on the station street side which connects the three stations as well as hooks into the wider bike network in the area. We wanted a memory of that barrier dune and so the form um, and the tones of that have been reflected in the station barriers as well as the station buildings. And then on top of that are a series of canopies and beacons which mark the entry to these stations. And these also provide a great opportunity for, elect for reflecting that deeper history of the site, which we'll come to shortly. The three stations are very much a family. Um, they're built from a kit of parts, a common kit of parts. So as Jess said, the um, trench is quite shallow, only about half a level down. Then we have the dune-like buildings and um, barriers. Um, on top of this, we then have the vertical circulation, stairs, lifts and ramps, and all of this is wrapped in screens which pick up on the tones of the coastal vegetation. Then at the very top there, you can see weather protection and these series of beacons, which are very vertical elements in the suburb, um, marking the stations. 
you can see how all of this comes together in this photo um, from the Nepean um, looking at Edith Vale Station. Down on platform, there's very clear lines of sight back up to the street, which is very rare in a rail under. And you can also see the legibility of that unpaid community access that provides another connection from the backyards to the bay. Chelsea's a bigger scale um, than Edith Vale, a bigger retail uh, and civic hub. So it has a more generous canopy, which reflects the scale of the canopies that run along the shop fronts on the other side. And on the east side of Chelsea, we've got one of the rare portions of increased area, and we've been able to have a more generous forecourt as well as a bus change. And Rush Wright's landscape is very important running through here and over time will greatly soften what's quite a hard context. Further to the north at Chelsea, there's a new pedestrian bridge. This connects that retail centre to some really important civic functions on the east side. Bomb Beach is set in a slightly lower scale of suburb um, and has this features this oculus which has a framed view um, down Monica Avenue directly to the bay. So as a commuter, um, both morning and night, you get these wonderful glimpses and connections back to the bay. Facing the other way from that pedestrian bridge, where you would have once seen that Karam Karam wetland, we've um, placed a PicPerf image um, with permission from the National Gallery of Victoria that shows what that astonishing wetland used to look like. Um, Bomb Beach also features an arbour and a series of canopies which form a stronger connection from the station through to the smaller retail hub. Um, here you can see also one of Jess and my favourite um, artworks that was delivered as part of the project to this little guy's called the Bomb Beach Bird. We had quite a complex but very fruitful engagement with traditional owners um, and I'd like to honour all of them who were involved. Um, Alan Murray played a very, very important role in coordinating that and working with us on the team. This possum skin cloak was put forward by um, the elders as a reference for the deeper history and context of the site. And so we've taken some of these elements and represented them on these beacons throughout the station. So here at Chelsea, there's reference to the shell middens that were used for thousands of years along this part of the coast. At the other end, uh, reference to the kangaroo apple, which was such an important food source for local people. These are lit at night, um, providing legibility and wayfinding. And then at that Chelsea Bridge, we've um, referenced that barrier dune with the Karam Karam wetland and also incorporated traditional language that says, help look out for the good country. This project has provided a family of stations which helps unite these three suburbs. It improves connections both along and across the corridor. And in the words of Alan Murray, starts to form the beginnings of a contemporary song line throughout this Bunong country. Thank you. Thank you.